Christian art began in the 2nd and 3rd centuries in Rome, where it went underground into the catacombs beneath the streets. Christians decorated the tombs of their loved ones with paintings and mosaics of biblical scenes and Christian symbols. And contrary to popular mythology, the Christians did not gather in the catacombs to hide from persecution or even to worship, but rather they visited to celebrate the life of their deceased loved one. And an image often seen in the catacombs is Christ as the Good Shepherd, and it was intended to evoke a sense of security and trust in Jesus' protection during those times of persecution. And other common images in the catacombs were the redemption stories such as Daniel in the lion's den, the three Hebrews in the fiery furnace, Noah and the ark, and Jonah. And the most common images from the life of Jesus were his miracle stories, such as the multiplication of the loaves and the fish, and his healing miracles. The art created by Christians in these first few centuries was coded to maintain secrecy. It also continued the Greco-Roman style of using common symbols, such as the peacock to represent the resurrection, the anchor, the fish, the Greek letters Alpha and Omega, and the intersection of Chi and Rho, the first two letters of Christ. However, the symbol of the cross or images of the crucifixion were not common during this time, and it was highly likely that any Christian found with cross imagery would have suffered persecution and ridicule, and so they didn't use it. When Constantine gave Christians full religious freedom in the Edict of Milan in the year 313 AD, the Age of Martyrs ended and the era of the Christian Empire began. After Constantine's conversion, he abolished crucifixion in 314 AD and the stigma associated with the image of the cross began to diminish, which allowed it to become a more prevalent symbol in Christian art. Christianity became the official religion of the Roman Empire, and many Romanesque style churches and abbeys were built, and so the opportunity for Christian art and symbols flourished. Artists were employed to create the furnishings and decorative elements for both public and private worship. And at this same time, marble imagery appeared and continued to portray many of the same images of the early Christians, such as Christ as the Good Shepherd. And interestingly, the images were usually reliefs and not full statues so that they could not be viewed from all sides, preventing the temptation for idolatry. During the Middle Ages between 400 and 1400 AD, the church used art for religious instruction because most people were illiterate. And even many of the poorest church buildings in Europe covered their walls with murals and mosaics of the stories of scripture. And the arts were used by both the Western and the Eastern churches in worship. However, the first iconoclastic controversy developed in the Eastern church between the 7th and the 8th centuries, and violent battles were fought over the tradition of icons. And for Eastern spirituality of that era, icons were understood as a channel of God's power, and through venerating the icon, the worshiper somehow became united with what the icon represents. When the Byzantine Emperor Leo III came to power in 717 AD, he ordered the destruction of any religious images, carvings, or icons depicting Christ, the Virgin Mary, or any saint or angel in human form. Any realistic human depiction in art was seen as a violation of the Second Commandment not to worship any graven image. So all religious art was restricted to non-human imagery, such as leaves or abstract patterns. And this first wave of iconoclasm ended in 843 AD with the decree in favor of the use of human images in worship. And the acceptance of icons in the Eastern Church was significant because they were viewed as more than just an aesthetic addition to the liturgy. Icons expressed a deep theological statement, the full humanity of Christ. Another important art form between 600 and 1600 AD were illuminated manuscripts. 
and these handcrafted books replaced scrolls and were written on vellum and parchment. And they were painstakingly copied during a time when books of any kind were precious and rare, and each page was a beautiful work of art. Two notable types of manuscripts were the Book of Kells, created by monks on the island of Iona off the coast of Scotland, and the Carolingian manuscripts, created during the reign of Charlemagne. The Book of Kells is a Latin translation of the Four Gospels and is considered by many experts to be the greatest work of manuscript illustration ever created. And the Carolingian manuscripts are associated with the rule of Charlemagne, who was crowned emperor of what is now France and Germany in 800 AD. Charlemagne was a great patron of the arts, and he commissioned several sets of illuminated Latin Gospels. They had a highly sophisticated layout and improved the clarity and readability of the text because they used large capitals to highlight section beginnings and also used a hierarchy of fonts. During the Gothic Age between 1290 and 1510 AD, Christianity experienced a time of prosperity and the church commissioned marvelous works of art, music, and architecture. The magnificent Gothic cathedrals of Europe were designed during this time to symbolically transport the worshiper from earth to heaven, and they were meant to be a utopian space and were full of treasures, stained glass, statues, and other forms of art which would elicit the grandeur of heaven. And this time in history gave us great works of art such as the Ghent altarpiece and Grunewald's crucifixion and the following three centuries of church and art history, known as the Renaissance, are even more splendid, due in part to the contributions of artists such as Michelangelo, Raphael, and da Vinci. And this age also saw the rise of humanism, the artistic depictions of secular subjects, and eventually the Protestant Reformation. During the 16th and 17th centuries, the Reformation in Europe was a time when the Protestant Church began to distance itself from religious imagery and artists. Some church leaders, once again, viewed certain forms of art as idolatrous and began to remove and destroy art from their churches. Leaders such as Sweeney and Calvin took part in the iconoclasm and attempted to eradicate religious imagery. Zwingli's actions seem even more severe in light of the fact that he was an accomplished musician. Calvin also advocated for the elimination of all religious art and symbols in worship, not because he thought they were superfluous or useless, but because he thought they were too powerful. Martin Luther, on the other hand, was initially hostile towards images, but took a more moderate approach and allowed them, as long as the worshiper understood, that art held no particular power and only symbolically represented the divine. A backlash to the iconoclasm of the reformers followed, and Baroque artists such as Peter Paul Rubens and Caravaggio responded with many significant works during the Catholic Counter-Reformation. And ironically, it was Rembrandt, the son of a Roman Catholic mother and a Protestant Dutch Reformed father, who produced some of the most remarkable paintings of biblical scenes of all time. However, the damage was done for the Protestant Church, and over the course of the next 400 years, the Church and art became increasingly distant and estranged from each other. There were many historical, cultural, and theological factors that led to the abandonment of art in the church in 16th century Europe, but it's important to note that many church leaders were not against art, only the misuse of art as idolatry, and that's still the same today. Some have agreed with this trajectory of separation, while others have not, and are now asking important questions. Does art really matter? Or is it just fluff and decoration in comparison with the weightier aspects of worship, such as preaching and teaching and discipleship, and the sacraments of baptism and Eucharist? What place do the arts have in Christian worship? Over the course of the last 2,000 years of church history, 
Artists of faith have used the arts to care for and create culture. Their art is a storehouse of the collective memories, experiences, and understanding of the God story. Yet until recently, many of us in Churches of Christ have paid very little attention to church history between the time of the Apostles and the early 19th century. In fact, the evidence of this attitude can be seen through placards on church buildings across the country that read, The Church of Christ founded in Jerusalem in AD 33, this building in 1969. By skipping over 19 centuries of church history, we have also skipped over 19 centuries of Christian art. While Protestant churches have had a strained relationship with the arts over the last several centuries, my hope and prayer is that the church can once again partner with artists to create magnificent works of art for praise and worship and teaching and to spread the gospel. So this is a trumpet call for churches and artists to once again come out and play together for the glory of God.